So you've um, started using 70s strats quite a lot within y in your music. So how did you kind of get into owning and playing them? I always wanted an old strat. And I suppose like anybody who plays a strat is probably at some point going to want an old one. And uh, at some point I sold a load of gear and I went basically on a hunt for an old one. And I I, I had the budget for like, a, like maybe a pre-CBS refin or something. And I tried a bunch of them, couldn't find one I liked. Tried a load of custom shops, couldn't find one I liked, that, that certainly that stood out. And then I saw this one available for sale on the internet, Gumtree, I think it was. <laughs> and, and it just looked really cool. And I thought, it's a 70s one. And I'm like, it looks great. I'm sure it's not, you know, it's gonna be really heavy. It's probably not gonna sound that great. I went to look at it and it's just a normal weight, it's not heavy. And it's just, you know, lively and loud and resonant. And I plugged it in and it was the best Strat I'd found, old, you know, old Strat, out of all the ones I tried. And so I bought it and thought, maybe it's just a one-off. Then the guy that sold me this, he was like more of a collector he got in contact probably about six weeks later and said, look, I've just taken another one in, uh, it, but it's been refinished. It's not really my sort of thing. I like, you know, stuff to be original. Would you be interested? And I said, well, is it like the one that I bought off you six weeks ago? He says, oh, yeah, it's about the same weight. He said, it's, it's a player's guitar, so you'll probably like it. Went to check it out. Again, it was another good one. So I'm like, okay, there's a bit of a theme you know, developing here. And I think when I was in my teens, I always remember the big headstocks and thinking they were the ugliest thing ever. I always thought the small 50s or 60s headstocks were the one to get. And just through, I suppose just through just looking for a good player strat that's not, you know, it's not a new custom shop. It's just something that's old, got a bit of character. And I've ended up with just a handful of them over the last couple of years that are the best strats I've, I've ever had. And they just happen, I suppose they just happen to be good ones. You know, the 70s get quite a bad rep, I suppose. And um, maybe they're not all like this. Um, some are heavier, some, but I just think every guitar is, is different. You've got to take every guitar on its own merit. So forget what the trends are. You know, 60s ones are the best ones, 70s ones are terrible. I think there's good and bad in all eras, really, so. Um, and what um, year is that particular guitar? This one is a 1974, and it's all original apart from, I think it's a couple of the pots have been replaced, and it's got a five-way switch, but it's original pickups, original paint and stuff. Uh, it's, it's been refretted recently uh, by Hugh Price, just did a great job on that. And it's got quite, I suppose, quite unusual for the year. It's got quite a highly figured sort of bird's eye flamey neck which was a thing that initially when I saw a picture of it, I'm like, wow, that looks so cool. I bet it's rubbish. <laughs> um, but, you know, it, it's kind of got all the good stuff and it looks cool as well. So, yeah, 74. We often, you know, it's dangerous to generalise about guitars, as we've, we've already said, really. But um, we often associate a particular sound with, let's say, Late 50s strats, people think of as having a certain sound. Uh, mid 60s strats, we might think of a slightly different sound. Do you think the 70s strats that you have have ha have a kind of sound of their own or anything different about them that makes them stand out from other strats that you might have played? I think, yes, yeah, certainly this one. And there's this, uh, a 75 Sunburst beaten up one that I have as well. And they've both got the, the 70s cast um, bridge assemblies. It's got the block saddles, the Mazak, Mazak, like sort of pot metal 
which again, you know, if you look on Google, oh, take that junk out. It sounds terrible. Put the earlier style in. I bought this guitar because I just liked it as it was. Then I read all this stuff, you know, take the bridge out, replace it with the, the better one. I tried that and instantly didn't like the guitar anymore. And so this, this, um, this bridge assembly definitely does something to the sound of the guitar that I like. It, I for me, it brings the mid, mid range of the guitar a little bit more forward. Uh, it's not as kind of um, smiley face EQ as, you know, big thumpy low end and sparkly top end. This is more mid focused, uh, but certainly into an overdriven amp, which is how, you know, 99% of the time I'm playing through, it cuts through and it's got that, um, I mean, on the neck pickup, the neck pickup on this I really like. It's quite throaty sounding, but it's got this sort of chewy mid range. I don't know how well it'll come across, but. And if I, if I do a quick compar direct comparison to that one, I'll just... <laughs> this, is, this, this one here is, um, this is a 1970. So this has got the earlier style bridge with the bent saddles, um, the four bolt neck. This one is a lot more scoop sounding certainly on you know if we can re if we can remember what that sounded like 30 seconds ago you know it's a bit more sort of sparkly on the top end and again the in, in between positions on this guitar are um back to this one uh, again neck pickup it hasn't got that sparkly top end but it's more forward in the mid-range and the in-between positions it's, it's darker it's thicker um, so is one better than the other they're just different. I suppose that one, being as it's one of the last of the four bolt necks, it's got the earlier um, bridge assembly, um, no bullet truss rod. So there is a difference. Um, but I, th I think a big part of it, the 70s thing, these cast bridges, everyone hates them, but I love them. And it's just, it's not better or worse, it's just different. It's a different flavor, you know, just, and I will pick that one or this one depending on what I'm playing. If I'm going for more of a, maybe more of like a Stevie thing, a Stevie Ray Vaughan, I'll probably pick that because it's got that kind of sparkly, more scooped thing. If I want a more throaty, maybe Rory Gallagher type thing, I'd go for this one. So, yeah. And what year is the Lake Placid? Um? That one is uh, 1970. It's a combination of 69 and 70, various parts of the guitar, you know, uh, are from different eras, but the latest, uh, I think the pickups are date, dated to 70. So that will be one of the last of the four bolts. Uh, and um, yeah, so that retains a lot of the earlier sort of late 60s features. And um, let's talk a little bit about the amp you brought along because I know yeah. you, you, you are, um, you've got your own signature Rift amp, which is an amazing amp, um, but this is, this is also an old friend really for you, isn't it? Yeah, I, I picked this up in Switzerland around probably 20, 20 years ago. And um, the guy literally gave it to me. I, I swapped it for a broken JCM 900 head, which we'd actually gone into the shop. We were in the middle of a tour. The amp had packed up the night before, found the nearest music shop. Hello, have you got a repairman? Can you fix this now? Because we have a show tonight. While they were looking at it, I found that in the back room. And I plugged in and most of the 70s JMP Master Volume Marshalls don't have reverb. I really like reverb. I, I struggle to play without it. And I, I plugged into that and I was like, wow, I've never heard a Marshall sound like that. It sounds a lot warm, almost quite fendery. And 
I sort of went, I said, look, you know, how much is that? Oh, it's just come in. It's not been serviced. We don't know too much about it. I said, but look, you know, I really, really like it. Could we do a deal? Because I've never liked that, nine, that JCM 900 head. Give me five minutes. And he came back and said, I'm sorry, the best we can do is a straight swap. So, <laughs> so I left them this 900 head and I walked away with that. And I used it for years, not realising that internally it wasn't, it wasn't stock, it's, it's got a different transformer out of a Fender or a Music Man amp or something. And on paper it shouldn't work, but the the effect it has on the sound is, is you know, to me it sounds a lot better than a typical um, mid-70s sort of Master Voy and Marshall. So I used it for years and then it became the inspiration for, you know, designing the, uh, the signature amp, which is based heavily on this. Yeah. And... Um do you use effects very much? I know previously, earlier in in your musical life, you haven't tended to use effects, but um, I believe that might have changed more recently. <laughs> yes, it has changed more recently, yes. Um, all because of a phone call to, to Mick Taylor, saying, Mick, I'm thinking of adding delay to my setup, but I'm not sure how to do it without compromising what I've already got. I didn't want, you know, my, my setup for years was literally this, um, and you know, a strat and maybe a you know boost or something, but mainly just this amp. And then I moved on to the rift, and I'm like, I don't want to lose anything I've got. I just want to add to it. How do I do it? Which delay pedal, etc., etc. And Mick said, "What? Well, why don't you come down? Come down, and uh, let's try a few things." And at the end of that day, I left, and you know, I tried a wet dry rig. So basically, I have a second amp running now at the side of. At the side of the rift. The rift has now replaced this because this is, as you can see, a little bit road worn. Uh, so the rift is my main dry amp, my main sound, and I have a, a, a Fender Vibroverb reissue, one of the 90s brown panel 2x10 ones. That's my wet amp, and that has, you know, delay and harmonic trem. Um, and it's been a journey of accepting it, accepting extra stuff to you know negotiate on a gig you know um you know in between song you know i'm singing i'm talking to the audience and i've got to tap the tempo for the next song and stuff so it's been yeah it's been um i'm still learning but the main criteria was that i didn't lose anything that i'd already you know sort of you know sculpted my tried to sculpt my sound around so yeah and um, how do you like your guitars, your strats particularly, um, these guitars set up in terms of the strings, the action, That's what's what's your happy place? Okay, so I tune down half a step, have done for all of my gigging um, time. Um, so everything's in E flat. I set my action a little bit higher than most people. It's probably around, at the 12th fret, probably around two mil, 2.2 mil, something like that. Um, and I just like it to... So if I really dig in, the guitar just gradually gets loud, it doesn't choke out. I'm quite a... Probably quite a dynamic, you know, I've got my, my, my playing style can be, you know, quite soft, you know, so if I'm... Um... It's, it's quite heavy-handed sometimes, and if I dig in, I want the guitar to just bark and get louder. So it can be, I've, sometimes people pick up my guitars and like, geez, you know, how do you play this? And it's not as high as it used to be, it has come down a bit. But um, yeah, so um, 11 to 52, sometimes 54, but I think I'm on 52 at the moment. 11, to, so it's 11, 14, 18 plain, 30, 42, 52. Uh, they're Kurt Mangan strings, great strings. Um, and I have a little bit of relief in the neck, not too much. Um, and just basically just so that it's, I suppose I set them up like acoustic guitars. So, so you can really dig in and really get some dynamics in your playing. And if a guitar is set up with too low action, it tends to just, as, as I dig in the guitar, just, it, it's like there's, you, you're fighting against it. There's, there's, there's a barrier in place. It's not getting any louder. So, um, other than that, technically, with all the electronics, the only thing I do 
is I connect on strats. I connect the bottom tone to the bridge pickup, just because you know strats can get a little bit, little bit wiry sounding, um, and just knock that back to sort of you know normally sits on about sort of six or so. Um, and one thing I have found, I think I've just started doing this without realising it, is a lot of time if I'm playing on the bridge pickup, I'll actually go to using my fingers. So you, it kind of counteracts that spikiness. So, so if I'm on the neck with the pick, you know. do that just to because with the pick it can be a bit um but pretty standard really um yeah <laughs> what about what about the things which are meant are, are the kind of cliches of why people sometimes haven't looked to 70s strats to be their main instruments you know the, the three three bolt um neck um or you know flat pole pickups when they came in as well do you what's your experience been of of those sort of things i think i think the whole three bolt neck thing was i mean they they really get kind of slated online um you know they move um this one doesn't move at all it never has done but I think that the net pocket on this is quite, it's quite, it's a good, you know, there's no gap. Um, I've seen a few where you can, you know, you could actually put a, a drop a plectrum down there and it would fall out again. So I think a big part of the problem might have been quite, you know, variations in quality control, just again, just from what I've read. Um, I don't see the three bolt thing as an issue. The, the Sunburst 75 I have, that neck does move. I've done a couple of fly out gigs with that, and when I get to the other end, the, the string's hanging off the neck, and I have to, you know, wrench it back into position. But once it's there, it stays in tune. Um, it doesn't. All that kind of stuff doesn't really matter to me. What matters to me is just a guitar that just it's a, it feels good to play. It's it's lively. It's resonant as you know as you're playing. You can feel it vibrating, and you plug it in, and it sounds good. That's that that's the criteria for me. Um, it doesn't have to be a four bolt neck or a three bolt. Um, the flat pole pickups, the Strats, which came in, I think it's around 70, end of 74. So this, as a 74, has got the staggers. The Sunburst 75 I have has the flat poles. Do, does this sound better? No, it's just that, I, I should have it here really. Um, that guitar equally sounds great, it's just a good Strat sounds different it doesn't sound better or worse it's just it's a different flavor it's um you know um i th yeah you, you can look at it you know um the difference between a 74 strat and a 75 strat obviously the 74 is going to be better because it's got the staggered poles is it you know it's just i think we've got to use these a bit more you know <laughs> <laughs> 